All right, well, this is Matt's JL, and uh, we did a couple things different on this build, and so I felt like uh, this would be a good one to do a walk around and tell you guys about. We've been doing a ton of one-ton JL builds. Uh, a lot of the time we use the Dana Spicer Ultimate 60s, but on this build, Matt wanted something different, and so we went with Dynatrack axles on this one. So it does stand out a little bit, but there's also just a lot of really cool things going on with this Jeep that... Uh, we want to show you guys. So first off, it has our uh, WFO long arm kit on here. So long arm front and rear. Um, as you can see right up in here, we added the KC rock lights. So it has KC rock lights all underneath it, uh, hooked up to the factor auxiliary switches. You see right here, the uh, motor built frame mounted rock sliders. So you can really come down hard on it and it's not gonna tweak the body. Like I said, this vehicle has Dynatrack axles in it and also wider Dynatrack axles. So this front and rear axle is the 72 and a half inch wide setup from Dynatrack. But if you look, you know, from the front of the Jeep, the tires don't really stick out that much. Maybe just the outer portion of the tread, right? And if you look at where the locking hub is, it's basically uh, even a little further out than the rim, but just inside the tire. So uh, take, take a look from right here, right up front, right down here. I mean, the locking hub is only about an inch in from the outer side of the rubber. And the reason being is this thing has five and a half inch backspace wheels. So what happens is you go to the 72 and a half inch wide front axle and rear axle, then you get rims with a lot of backspacing, which brings your outside to outside in, but it really helps the scrub radius. It also helps to fit the 40s in the wheel well because the tires just turn in the wheel well, the closer you are to the pivot of the ball joints, instead of being way far out with an offset wheel where the tire travels forward and back. So with these wide axles, with a lot of backspacing, it, it's the least amount of rubbing inside the fender. So these are factory fenders, hollowed out, Quake LED lights here, um, it has the American Adventure Labs metal inner fenders, front and rear has uh, metal cloak 3.5 inch dual rate coils, uh, Fox 2.5 shocks with the clicker, the compression, uh, high speed and low speed uh, compression adjuster. Um, one of the really cool things with this build is the air lockers, 538 gears and air lockers from Dynatrack. Um, we went ahead and used some taser wiring components and hooked the air lockers up to the factory locker switch on the dash. So just like stock, lock the lockers with the button up and down, all factory. Trail ready bead locks, like I said, 17 by nine with five and a half inch backspacing with the power tank monster valves for airing it down fast. 40 inch Nitto trail grapplers. It's got 1350 CVs front and rear. Um, you come around to look at the back of this thing. First thing you see is a ton of axle bolts right here. And that's because this is something fairly new from Dynatrack. This is their HD rear Dana 60. Um, it's got four inch axle tubes. It actually has the Pro Rock notch out of it, even though it's a low pinion. So being that it's a low pinion HD 60, it's running on the strong side of the gears um, instead of some of the other kits that run high pinion 60 gears. You can see we added some shock skids right there. Um, this thing has the full metal cloak uh, underbelly skid plates front to rear. We went ahead and powder coated those, um, our gray color, same as the long arm. Uh, on the back here, 40 inch spare tire. And this is the moto built tire bracket that uh, replaces the hinge, holds the eight lug 40 inch spare with their license plate mount with the camera. Um, moto built rear bumper as well. Uh, the air compressor on this one is actually under the hood which is different. A lot of times we mount it under the seat, so there is an option to mount it under the hood. And it sits right there underneath the hood. I actually don't remember whose bracket that is, but you can see here's the manifold solenoids for the air lockers, compressor under the hood, big Odyssey battery, um, otherwise pretty stock and clean underneath here. Um, the KC pillar lights, those are new. Those are really cool, small, low profile. Um, factory steel bumper with the worn winch sunk, suck in with the uh, factor 55 ultra hook, you know, and a rope. Uh, another thing this thing has, if you take a look underneath here, so kind of tucked in hidden is the PSC hydro assist. 
So the bracket mounts come with the Dynatrack Front 60 on this, so that worked out pretty easy. Good for us to hook up. Um, and I believe that the tie rod and drag link here, from they came from Dynatrack. I believe those are uh, steer smarts. Um, some of the cool things are, you know, airlines plumbed out to the bumper right here for airing up tires. Um, like I said, all the switches, you know, kind of in the factory spot inside. So you look inside this thing, there's no big switch panels or anything. Um, and it has the uh, handheld CB on the dash there. So it doesn't take up a ton of space. Other than that, the inside uh, is just simple and easy. So um, basically, you know, the difference in this one is the Dynatrack axles and they fit in really well. It's still low to the ground. With our long arm, has a ton of flex, ton of travel. Drives awesome. Um, basically just a do everything Jeep. I really don't know what else you can do except for maybe uh, add the Hemi, put a 392 in this thing. Maybe you might want to think about that, Matt. Anyway, hope you like Matt's Jeep and uh, just get, getting ready to go home and hope he enjoys it.